Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and today we're going to show you a brand new product from Hike Vision. And thank you to our kind sponsors, Toshiba, for our YouTube channel. So, moving on. Today we're going to look at a brand new product, a new face recognition access control terminal from Hike Vision. Of course, Hike Vision always innovating, always bringing new products to market, and this is one of those exciting products. So a nice small package. So inside the box, we have a very small face recognition access control terminal now to put this into perspective this is an iphone 12 pro that's how small this is in comparison so almost the same size as an iphone 12 pro it is a little bit bigger but that's to show you the context how small this unit actually is so this unit has got the built-in LCD screen, it's got the two face cameras or two recognition cameras, so for live face detection, so it's the anti-spoofing technology. It's got the built-in white light LED, so to illuminate the area, so you get a much better facial read in a low light environment, and that can be set to manual or auto. It's got a built-in fingerprint reader, so if you, those of you that do want the fingerprint technology, you can use it with or without the fingerprint, so this unit is with or without. So this is the one with, because um, at some point we will enable that. We're going to install that on our demo room entrance door, so it gives it a nice modern feel to it. On the back, you can see it's a flat plate construction. There's a security uh, hatch which you undo the security screws, and inside the box itself, so you get a power supply, so a 12 volt, 2 amp power supply. Really important to note, these aren't PoE powered, so they are network, IP network device, but they're not PoE powered. So you need to use the 12 volt PSU, so either use the one that's included, or a separate one that, you, that you're gonna provide. The unit itself comes with a mounting plate. So it also comes with a USB, mini USB converter, so you can put that into the unit for USB upgrades or downloading information. It comes with the 12 volt jack plug, and it also comes with a click in like IDC connector, pushes into the back of this unit here, so you remove the flap, that connects into the slot there, and you have your 12 volt, you've got your Wigand uh, for if you wanna use an external reader, so you can have face rack in, reader out, it's really important. It's got the RS45 control, it's got the door contact, a request to exit function, and it's got the relay function as well. So it's a really, really powerful unit, a self-contained door controller. It's also very cost effective. So I'm not gonna tell you the price on here, but if you contact your DVS specialist, they will tell you how much this is. And it's nowhere near as expensive as an iPhone 12 Pro, let's put it that way. Very, very cost effective. Um, I think this is gonna be a really popular design, de uh, popular de de device due to its design. Um, very sleek, very modern, very architectural. It takes up minimum space. In fact, it's not much bigger than a large, um, access control reader so that's how popular i think this device is going to be much more cost effective and it is a true network device stick it on the network and you've got add an ip address to it and you can control it through our ivms 4200 software which is free or hike central if it's a larger integrated system so the construction feels really nice they kept they've come a long way um in their product design and innovation so really solid construction it's got the tamper switch on the back, so if somebody removes it, the software will get an alarm. I say the security cover plate on there with all the access control functions that you'd expect. And we've also got some mounting, some mounting plates. So you've got the two mounting plates that's vital to attach that to a wall. They are IP rated, um, it's IP65 rated. I'm not sure that I would probably put that outside. Whilst it is IP rated, um, it's a very attractive um, vandal um, unit, as in vandals could easily go and smash that because especially with the light on, the LCD screen, you might find this attractive for somebody to go and smash it up with a hammer or try and prize it off the wall because um, they think it's valuable. Uh, so I don't know, mixed emotions about putting it outside. Uh, again, with facial recognition and a fingerprint, if you get rain on it, it can affect the fingerprint performance and direct or strong sunlight can affect the facial recognition performance as well. So they are primarily designed for indoor internal use. So that's the unit. We're gonna go and install it, swap it over from a much older unit that we have on the outside. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to go swap that over. So join us where we'll power it up, show you how easy it is to program via IBMS 4200 and how quickly and how accurate the reads are. So stay tuned. We'll see you in two minutes. Okay, so we're going to activate the new FaceTrack terminal. So we fitted it. It's on the network. It's on the entrance to our demo room. So you can see that's the device there. So we'll quickly select that and activate it. So let me just type our password in or one of our many passwords. Okay, so it's now activated. We're going to assign it a DHCP address just so I can pick it up on the network, make it very simple. This is a trick I often use. Okay, so 3.140. We're going to save that. Okay, so we're happy that that's now saved. We can close that down and come off there. So that's now added to the network. So add the device. So name... Uh, now it's important I always select synchronized time to make sure it's synchronized to my local time here in the UK. Click add. And that's now come online. So the next thing we're going to do is check that there is or isn't a new firmware version for it. So we're going to go into remote configuration, this cog symbol here. And you can see here it's on 3.1.7 currently. So we'll quickly open up a web browser. Navigate to the UK portal. We're in the UK, so we always use the UK firmware. It's normally tweaked for our region. So product firmware, access control and video intercom. And you can find all of the uh, latest firmware releases under here for all of our products. So access control, it's a terminal. And you can see there, you just choose the relevant model number. So it is D341, 341, 317-200-927. So, so it's a slightly later firmware. So we're on 200-722 and that's 927. So we will quickly update this unit. You can see the release notes there, so let's just check. There's nothing sinister about it. Add new features, support one height connect. Let's just check it supports our model number. Yeah, so we're going to quickly update this. So this may take a couple of minutes. So what I will do is go here, download, download, save as. We're going to put it onto the desktop, new folder. Uh, New face oh, it's very quick actually, so you may as well just stay online when we do this. Open the folder, right click, 7-zip, extract here. I use 7-zip, you can use WinRAR, um, WinZip, anything really, just to make sure you unzip the file. So that's done. And we're happy we can close this down. Close tabs. Go back into here. Remote configuration. And the maintenance. Double click on the folder. Find that folder we found or downloaded to desktop. Where is it? Down the bottom. New face track terminal. Double click. Upgrade. OK. Now oh, I don't know how long this is going to take. This may take several minutes. Okay, so the unit has rebooted now, so we're going to go back into remote configuration. Make this full screen so you can see it. There are some uh, new little touches they've added to the new firmware and to the new unit. So you've got the one key height connect call in. We've also got the ability to um, put like a background display on there. So we could upload a JPEG image. It could be your company advertising, um, which we're going to do like a DVS logo. It could be a like an instruction set. Uh, it's a background that says, please do this, etc. So it's quite powerful in how you can interact with this unit. So standard things, you've got the maintenance, you know, reboot, default, X, X, or et cetera. Under the network settings, we're going to actually go to advanced, go to garden vision, enable that, and we're going to give it a give it change that. So change that. Okay, Garden Vision enabled. So we're going to add that to our Height Connect app. So 
quickly go up here and get the serial number. So this is the serial number. So I'm just adding this on my phone now. So, okay. So, done that. That's just adding to the account. Um, preferred DNS, that's set. Advanced, that's set. Da -da -da. Okay. We're going to use video and audio. Done that. Audio, that's where you adjust the input output volume. So the speaker and microphone settings for this unit. Audio prompt. So what you can actually do now is enable the audio prompt or turn it off. So on the audio prompt, you can actually set the wording now. Whereas before it was authenticated or um, not authenticated, um, or authentication failed, we can actually change the word now. So during this time period here, um, language is English only currently. This is the English firmware. So prompt of prompt of authentication success. We're going to say welcome to DVS. And then you can have a different prompt for a different time period. Again, prompt or, you know, if you wanted to have a second um, time duration, and we're just going to have one um, time duration. Again, time period when authentication fails. So if it fails, we're going to put, please wait for security. Or you could be whatever you want. Now click save. So you can actually add different time profiles for this. So if you wanted, you could add another one. At one certain time, it could be, please wait for security. And then outside of hours, it could say, um, this building is now shut. Please return in opening hours or something. So it is really powerful how you can actually, one, customize the audio prompt, but two, also put time periods against it. So that's a nice little um, added touch on this new unit and firmware. Uh, image, intercom. So image is the image settings. Again, we'll just skip past that. The intercom setting, so it's a door station, and that's how you set it up to be within the intercom parameters. Access control, so we've got the door parameters, so we could call it DVS demo room. I'll just put DVS. Uh, lock action is five second open time, door timeout alarm 30 seconds, remain open, remain closed, um, extended duration time, QS code and super password, so you can set those as required, so it has some access control functionality. Then you've got card security, so you can adjust that as necessary um, for the card read inside. The, our unit has got the fingerprint as well. Um, the one we're stocking has doesn't have the fingerprint because it's not really used um, that much in this day and age. Link network setting, so if you've got a master IP address like the IMS4200 software, you can actually send it to that. So if I quickly check what my IP address is. So IP config tells me what the IP address is. 0 0.125 so if i put masters at 192.168.0.125 so now we, we can call the software from our unit and you've also got the rs485 settings and the wigan settings so you can have rs45 devices and wigan so like an extra reader so with a wigan if you enable it you can change it to an input or output so input for a card reader or output to talk to an external um say third party device um, maybe a third party access control system but we haven't got that connected today so we're going to save that vca configuration again and um, this is where you set up the actual vca not the VCA as in line cross and intrusion like we'd normally say, associate the VCA. This is more for the engines, for the face recognition engine. So we've got face anti-spoofing. Live face detection is normal, high profile or highest. Recognition distance automatic or you can set it for the recognition distance. Application mode indoor, continuous face. So you can adjust these parameters as required to get the accurate read. What I would suggest is when you first install it, leave them as default. Check how that is um, performing for you. And if needed, you can adjust these specifically per application. You shouldn't really need to adjust these specifically, but again, you can if needed. And you can also adjust the fingerprint security level as required. We're happy with those as the default, and we're gonna click save. For the notice public for publication, this is where we can actually add in our background, like I just said. So sleep time after 60 seconds, we're going to put it to 10 seconds. Um, so sleep is enabled after 10 seconds, or 20 is the minimum, sorry. So 20 seconds, we're going to put a custom screensaver on there and put it to a DVS image. So under pictures, JPEG, there we go. So we're going to add this funny one in there. Click upload, upload and succeeded. 
slide show is one second if you have multiples uh, uploaded so it'll cycle between more than one so actually if i add another one and put dvs in there to make sure it's a jpeg no. jpeg yes um slideshow let's put it upload that oh, that's too big the file let's just leave it as the default one then Person he was on JPEG one. Let's see if this one works. It did work. Um, Custom. Let's put it three seconds. Save. There we go. So you've got two. So it'll go between the two for three seconds. So you can put different images on it or just the one. It's up to you. Uh, so that's really powerful. Really nice feature. So we'll see how that works shortly. Next, once we finish uh, configuring that menu, close that down. Next, we need to add my face to it. So we go into the main menu. We go into person. It's a face rec unit, so obviously, let's call that DVS. Add a face. David Davis. Email ask DVS at DVS.co.uk. Phone number 029204555512. Okay, we're going to add a face, and we're going to do remote collection. So select a device, mini face rec terminal. We're going to use that. You can upload a JPEG or you can use the enrollment station that sits on a desktop if, you, desktop if you've got loads of faces. What I would say is always use the enrollment station or the face rec unit itself. It will get the best possible image and it will give you the highest accuracy. If you upload a JPEG, it will work, but it doesn't always work to the best performance. Let's try this. I'm by the unit itself now. Remote collection. Start that. Okay, so we've got a face now. Um, my pose. Ah, so we're going to accept that now. Ugh, sorry, I had to run back to my thing. So yeah, so accept that face. Not the best, I know. Fill these details in. I'm going to add a fingerprint. Quickly add that. So give me two seconds. Again, let's go in front of the door. Uh, so start that and we're going to use the terminal okay so you have to do it in a set way so it takes three fingerprint uh, three presses to read your fingerprint so we'll click add on that and then you can add the access control parameters etc as needed so click add so I'm added myself in with face and fingerprint now. Next thing we need to do is go to access control under authorization and access group. We need to add a group, so we'll call it DVS. All the authorize, add myself in, add the unit, so select that and click save. We now have to apply it, so select it and click apply all to device. All applied. So now, once we've done that, we can click down on that or stop. Back into the menu, go to monitoring. And again, I can open the door so I can unlock the door, unlock it, etc., lock it, capture. So now I'm going to go up to the face. I'm going to go up to the unit itself and use my face so you can see it coming through just to see it opening the door, the authorization. And then I'll get the camera and I'll show you how the background and how quickly it does recognize my face. So. Give me two seconds, we'll just see that come through. So you can see there, um, it's recognized me. Uh, if I just click on this, you've got, that is my record there. Uh, face authenticated, you can see my captured one and the one I'm using to actually, that's, that's the stored one and that's the one I've actually come in with. So that's nice and simple, it works really nice and well. Okay, so we're going to transfer you over to the camera and I'm going to show you how quickly it recognizes you and you can also see the background on there. The beauty with this unit is it does work with face masks as well, so it's been optimized for the use with face masks. So again, um, I'm going to put my face mask on and just show you that working. In fact, I'll do that now so you can see that in the menu. So give me two seconds. Okay, so if I look on there, you can see I had my face mask on there. So my database image and my face mask image, um, it did it did authenticate me. So again, it does work with face masks for any of you that wanted to know. Um, 
Stay tuned a second. I'm just going to quickly transfer you over because I really want you to see how powerful this unit is. Okay, so I've got my face mask ready. Again, don't forget, that's the size of the uh, terminal uh, compared to my iPhone 12. So it's a really nice, stylish unit um, fitted to the entrance of our demo room. You can see currently it's in screensaver mode. So that image that we uploaded earlier is cycling through it. So yeah, nice to see the advertising on there. And again, you can put one, many, put the cycle time on there. That's no problem. This model has the built-in fingerprint module. Um, we're not stocking that currently. I know this one is just for testing. Um, not many people are actually using the fingerprint model um, in this current environment. So it's card and face or card or face. Um, so, but we can get the fingerprint one if you really desire it. 12 volt, um, it's not PoE currently, it's 12 volt, two amp. Um, but again, it is a full IP terminal, sits on the network with the full control on there. So, um, what I've also done is gone into the menu and I've enabled the white light here, uh, two reasons. One, I find it helps with the read. Um, it does, I think, improve the read accuracy. Uh, but we can change that from zero to 100%. That's currently set at 50%. But also, it's an attractive light which draws attention to the unit, which then allows your staff or your customers, visitors, etc., to walk up to it to present their face. So really, really handy. So I'm going to put my mask on. So I just picked up a mask on my desk, put it on there. I'm going to show you the performance of it. So I'll zoom you in slightly and just show you that working. Whoop. Welcome to DVS. So you can see how quickly, even with a mask on, how quickly it detects. And you can see the custom audio message again. Welcome to DVS. So again, if I take my mask off, So you can Welcome see how nice and quick that is. So that's all from me. Um, let me just zoom you back out. That's all from me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned, stay subscribed, stay safe. Next week we've got some really exciting content for you again. Uh, any questions, ask dvs at dvs.co.uk or use the forums or uh, comment on the video and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching, stay safe.